In 1992, the terrorist activities of the Shining Path exploded on DeSoto's doorstep. This peaceful and quiet Lima neighborhood became the center of the deadly firestorm that engulfed the nation. The Shining Path terrorized Peru. One of their favorite weapons was the use of car bombs. They placed them in the building of Carata behind me, which was totally devastated, and dozens of people were killed. That happened on the 16th of July of 1992. My building, the one of the ILD, was also bombed four days later. Also many people died. Those were terrible times, very unpleasant times. By 1990, Abimael Guzman led an army of Maoist guerrillas on a rampage of death and destruction. Guzman assigned a squad of terrorists to assassinate Hernando de Soto. The terrorist groups began threatening us when we were going to the field, when we were talking with community leaders. Everybody was uh, talking about the possibility of an attack to the ILD because of the programs against the drug traffickers, the guerrilla leaders, etc. When I was in the way to my home, the bomb exploded. Immediately I started switching the TV. And they were saying, ILD? in Peru has disappeared. Everything was very confusing, the smoke and the police cars and everything like this. Aside from the sorrow about the dead and the wounded, it was actually a sense that we were accomplishing something. I mean, if we were being bombed, if we were being machine gunned, that meant that we were actually having an impact with our programs. Otherwise, why would they choose us? Because De Soto and the ILD openly took on the Shining Path, and their years of research were beginning to have an impact. One surprising revelation stood out. It seemed the poor controlled far more assets than anyone had thought possible. What these poor people have here doesn't look like much, but the total value of their homes in Peru is about $80 billion. De Soto and the ILD's estimate of $80 billion was only for informally held or extra-legal real estate. They now believe that the figure worldwide might be as much as $10 trillion. So there's not a problem of creating wealth. The problem is that that wealth is fragmented into a variety of small little extra legal systems, thousands of them. So the challenge is, how can they be used in a larger market? Hernando de Soto believed that by giving poor people title to their land, government would turn them away from the shining path because access to credit and the ability to start businesses would begin to improve their lives. Getting a property system into place is very complex because it is about undoing myths. It is about making sure that your legal systems are accessible to those that you thought weren't interested in the system in the first place. The ILD launched an intensive campaign to promote reform. At the core was De Soto's effort to show the poor the other path, El Otro Sendero. The best-selling book, now translated into 12 languages, offered an agenda for change. Simplify the laws, issue property titles, and give the poor the same access as anyone else within the system. A comprehensive media campaign, directed by the ILD, promoted legal reform and government action. It was De Soto's direct challenge to the Shining Path's strategy of violence. Guzman countered that De Soto's book and the ILD campaign was attempting to trick the poor into being happy developing their own businesses rather than fighting a revolution. The ILD had become the voice of the poor. To make sure everybody understood what our program was about, we put advertisements everywhere. We summarized our arguments into pictures, into slogans. The high-profile national debate reached millions of Peruvians. Riding a wave of public support, the ILD pressured the Peruvian government to enact legislation. De Soto was chosen to be a government advisor. The whole country agreed that this was crucial and that new laws had to be drafted up, but nobody was doing it. So we learned to draft laws. Then we learned to pass laws through Congress, how to lobby Congress. It was not an easy or quick process. 
the government was filled with entrenched elites and powerful blocs. The notion of property is even complex for elites. So the way to sell this is to understand what the effects of property are for the country as a whole. So if you're able to illustrate to elites that by giving property, you will stifle a terrorist movement, they'll understand it. If elites want bigger markets and they're not getting them abroad, but you're able to demonstrate that the internal markets with the poor are actually even larger than their foreign markets, they will understand why it is advantageous to bring them inside the system. Faced with a full-scale civil war, persuasive ILD research, and the landslide upset victory of Peruvian President Alberto Fujimori, who won widespread support among the poor by promising change, the elites had to give way. By 1992, De Soto and the ILD had drafted, won public support for, and successfully promoted passage of 416 laws. The laws established government entities to title both urban and rural landholders and to set up agencies which specialized in lending to them. They shortened the time needed to register a small business from 289 days to one and reduced the time needed to record property from an average of six years to 45 days, cutting costs by over 95 percent. Peruvian journalist and political commentator Jaime de Althaus reported the events at the time. La titulación de propiedad ha tenido un efecto muy claro, muy perceptible en el desarrollo de los sectores populares y en la incorporación de los sectores populares. Bueno, los creo que el programa que más éxito ha tenido es el de titulación de la propiedad. The ILD not only succeeded in titling the properties of almost half of Peru's 28 million citizens. They created the policies that helped raise Peru's growth rate throughout the 1990s to one of the highest in the world. Working together with the government, the ILD also created reforms that protect the human rights and freedoms of individual Peruvians. The ILD's contribution to defeating the Shining Path was not military. It had to do with brain power. It had to do with research. According to The Economist magazine, the ILD-sponsored reforms greatly undermined the Shining Path. La posibilidad de, en las ciudades, tener un título de propiedad, incorporarse al sistema, eso ayudaba a quitarle también mercado a las ideas senderistas. ¿no? When government gives people what it should have given them in the first place, which is secure property, it's not a difficult choice for the farmers. It's simple, you prefer the rule of law to terrorists any day. And so, the Shining Path lost the war. The assassins were captured and tried, and Abimael Guzman was sentenced to life in prison for his crimes. Peru emerged as the only country in the world to defeat its homegrown terrorists both politically and militarily.